Hey guys, uh, welcome to Carnivorous Plants Hub. Um, today I'm bringing you another update on my Venus flytrap flower stalk propagation. Uh, this is my fifth video uh, showing you guys my updates on the, the propagating of the, the Venus flytrap flower stalks. Uh, I have a playlist if you want to check out my last video or if this is the first one you're watching and you want to see what it's looked like since the beginning, check out that playlist. It'll have all five videos. There's a link in the description. Um, it's pretty interesting to see how this process is when I got some pretty good tips and everything for you. So uh, make sure and check that out. Uh, also, I just wanted to uh, thank everyone for being here. I really appreciate it. Uh, before I show you my uh, update on this, um, just want to want to thank you for supporting me. My dream is to open a, a carnivorous plant nursery in my community someday. Uh, and this whole channel is just me trying to uh, prepare for that. So thank you for being here. Uh, subscribing to my channel, liking the videos, that kind of stuff is uh, really important in helping me succeed and uh, is, is fantastic in helping support me. So thank you so much for being here. Um, but let's go ahead and, and take a look. Uh, my last update was probably, uh, I think it was 15, 16 days ago. So it's a little over two weeks. Um, so I'm going to show you. If you remember last time, I'm going to take the plastic off of this one. I had an actual small Venus flytrap grow. Um, now, I actually went out of town for about 10 days and I had somebody watching my plants and at the kind of a fault of my own, I, for, I kind of neglected to give them very good care instructions for the, the propagation. Uh, so this one here, this first one I'm showing you actually got a little dry while I was gone and it didn't do super great. Um, let me zoom in here. You can see uh, there's still a pretty good part of the plant that's still really green and is still healthy. So I'm 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 pretty happy about that. Uh, but on this side here, you can see there was a few traps that turned black and died um, as a result of just it getting a little too dry. Um, it was almost it wasn't completely dried out, but it was it was to the point where it, it definitely needed a good watering. Uh, and while you're propagating, having excessive amounts of water and moisture is really important. Um, it should never get as dry as it did. So I'm, I'm happy that um, that it didn't die and it's still growing. But also at the same time, I don't think there's been much growth on this one because it wasn't getting the water that it should have. So, uh, but you can see that we do have a little bit, we have a little node there um, starting to pop up on this one. Um, so I'm hopeful that uh, with the more water and everything, this, this one over here should start growing here pretty soon. Uh, so let's go and pull off this one. I was really hoping that when I got back from vacation that these ones would have been grown a little more. Um, you can see it, there are some starts here. So there's a little guy right there. That one's coming out and starting to be a plant. Uh, there's another little guy right there. It's doing pretty good. Um, let's see, I don't think that the actual flower grew anything. And I don't know if this one, I haven't actually checked this one. Let's check this one real quick. Let's pull this out. Oh yeah. This one has a ton of little nodes on it. So let me see if I can get the better angle here so you can see it. So you can see that's growing a lot. That's actually gonna be a pretty nice growth once that gets done growing. So the one that was stuck in the soil is actually growing considerably better. Um, give me just a second here. Let me see if I can get this stuck back into the... Oh no, it's not going back in. I'm gonna have to when we're done here, I'll dig out a little hole and bury that better. But um, so yeah, so so for these ones, uh, even though I'm getting growth on the ones laying down, it actually seems like this guy here is growing better, uh, the one that was buried inside of the substrate, rather than the one that was laying down. So far, uh, up to this point, it seems like the ones laying down have been better. But that's one of the first ones I've noticed that uh, is maybe a little bit better in growing bigger than the ones that were laying down. So, uh, so far definitely you've had some success with both types. Now, I did just check this one a little bit ago. Um, the, the other one here, the, this, so this other one is the way to do this. So actually, let me go back real quick here. This might be your first video. So you can see the way that I have this set up here is I got these two guys um, inside of this tray. And I don't normally keep my Venus fly traps in, in water trays. Um, mostly because I don't live in a very hot area um, and they don't need a ton of water. Um, but for, for propagating, you want to make sure that they, they're kept way more wet than you would normally keep a Venus flytrap. So what I do is I keep these in a tray of water, um, which is fine. It's worked, um, but it hasn't grown as good as my other one. And I'm going to show you that in just a second here. And I think that's because in my other one, I keep the, 
the actual uh, planter inside um, of a Tupperware and it actually keeps it wet more, more uh, it keeps it wetter longer um, and it keeps the substrate just wetter in general. Um, this one you can see it starts to get a little dry at the top and it stays pretty moist but the, you'll, you'll see in my other one here that this setup is much better than that setup. So here's the setup that I would recommend. Let me take off the plastic here. And so this, you can see with this setup, I have a uh, planter that I cut off. Um, I cut it off at a, probably about, oh, I don't know, two, two and a half inches maybe. And then I put it inside of the Tupperware and you can see that there's water in there. So there's enough space in there to where there's just water. Basically the planter is sitting in, in a puddle of water and with it being down inside there like that I can cover it uh, with the plastic really easy um, these ones I have to stick like a bag over it and it's kind of a pain in the butt to constantly be doing that but with this one I can just take a piece of plastic and put it right over the top um, to keep the, the moisture in there so this is a much better setup and you can see now um, you can see the results are actually a lot better as well now I was gone for nine days and I did not this did not get any water while I was gone um, and this is basically what it looked like when I got back um, I just added a little bit more water to it because this water level was down maybe a half inch. Um, but this is essentially what it looked like. Um, so this will also stay wet and moist a lot longer than this setup over here. Uh, so having the planter down inside the Tupperware or whatever you use, whether it's a bowl or whatever, um, is actually a much more effective method of keeping these moist for propagation. Alright, so here we go. Let's take a look at this. Um, so we have this one here that's laying down, you can see we have a nice little fly trap plant. It's actually developing uh, traps. You can see a trap over there, and you can see a ton of traps are starting to pop up. And that's out of that green one that's laying down. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Let me see if I can get. Oh, that was my limit right there. So you can see that one's really healthy. Uh, that one's doing really good. It's actually to a point now where I'm probably going to start taking the plastic off and exposing it to more light since it's starting to grow a little more roots. Um, let's see, let's go over here. We got some nodes there, some nodes on that back one, the red ones. Got some nodes coming out there, so that's going to do pretty good. We got this really little green one here, and I don't know if that's green because it's a different species or if it's green like that because it's just that size. Um, but that one's definitely growing. Uh, and then we got another pretty decent sized fly trap right here. You can see there's a, a trap that's opened and fully grown right there, and then lots more traps that are coming up. So that one's doing good. So this one here, you can see, even though, I'm gonna switch hands with the camera real quick because my hand gets in the way of the light um, from that side. So you can see this one here is, it, it's, it's one that's standing up. Let me turn this a little bit. But you can actually see there's a little bit of green coming out so you can see that it's having success um, even without lifting it. But I'll go ahead and lift it for you anyway so you can see. So you can see there's the, oh, it's not focusing on. So there's the flight trap coming out the side of it. So you can see that that's doing pretty good. Let me put that back down in there. And then this one over here is kind of the same thing. You can see this one is, has the green coming out of the bottom, but this one actually I think has a little bit more. See there's some, some flight traps there. So. Uh, both methods again seem to be working. Um, I will say though in this tray though the ones that are laying down seem to be growing a little bit better um, or at least a little bit faster. As you can see they're almost they're almost starting to look like full plants now whereas the ones that are in the ground are still kind of just have a couple of babies coming off of it. So the ones in the ground seem to be behind a little bit. Um, the ones that are laying down definitely seem to be having the most success. So. I think honestly, based on what I have found so far um, with this batch of, of flower stock propagation, is that laying them down um, into the substrate, making sure they have good contact with the substrate is, is probably the best method. I think I'll probably stick to that method rather than sticking them in the ground like that. Um, another reason that I like them being above ground is that I can see the progress easier. Um, you know, with with it being in ground like that, I have to pull that out of the ground to see where the progress is at. But with it being above ground like this, I can see the nodes developing. Um, I can see it all happening without really having to touch it or mess with it. Um, and I guess really if you're patient and you wait, you don't really have to touch these either because they'll eventually pop up. 
Uh, but I really enjoy opening this up and taking a look at the daily progress to kind of see, you know, where it's at and if anything's growing and maybe that's just me being impatient, but uh, either way, I kind of like that better. And they just seem to be growing faster. So yeah, so that's, that's where we're at with the flower stalk propagation, guys. Uh, so far, it's going really, really well. I feel like I'm going to be getting several fly trap starts here out of this batch. Um, looking like maybe five, five to eight plants coming out of this. So uh, I'm really excited about that to see these little guys grow. Uh, I did just have, I did just have a, my last video was re repotting a Venus fly trap that I bought from Walmart, um, and those are both growing flower stalks right now. Uh, so I will probably be doing more flower stock propagating here pretty soon with two flower stocks. It should be enough to fill up another one of these guys uh, and get another batch going. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to be um, making a video with those ones yet. I might. I think what I might do is just like a complete tips and tricks video um, showing exactly how to do the propagation uh, since I'm a little more experienced with it now in this climate. Uh, I can give some more tips and, and show you guys exactly how it's working. So. Uh, so that, yeah, that's kind of where we're at. Uh, th this one didn't, hasn't done as well as I would like to, uh, which is my fault because I didn't give very good care instructions for how to take care of these. All my other plants did fine while I was out of town, but these ones did not because I, I kind of forgot to give good instructions on the, 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 the flower stalk propagation. So um, this one did totally fine while I was gone because of the setup. So if you're gonna do this, definitely put your planter inside of a dish covered up with some plastic and it'll stay moist for I, I bet this would stay moist like this for probably a good month without me needing to even check it um, just based on kind of how it's done so far so strongly suggest that if you're propagating um, with flower stalks or even if you're propagating with um, leaf cuttings uh, which I will probably be doing here soon too uh, definitely keep it down inside like that and it'll keep it you can just tell I mean look you can see you can see the wetness of that you can see how much water is kind of sitting in there, which is good for this stage. Not good for mature Venus fly traps. You never want your substrate to look like this, but look at how wet that is compared to this. You can just see like that's wet, but it's not really saturated. Like this is completely saturated and keeping it really moist. Uh, and I have to actually top water these frequently to keep them like this. This one I never top water. I don't have to do it. So it's much, it's much lower maintenance much easier to take care of and as you can see from the plant growth it's more effective so there's absolutely no reason not to do it this way but yeah so that, that's everything for right now guys uh, like I said I'll be doing some more um, propagating here pretty soon uh, I'm actually really excited because I just ordered some fly traps online um, some new ones so I'll be doing uh, videos unboxing those so make sure you, you subscribe to my channel so you can get notified when uh, I received that package. I just ordered some stuff off Amazon too to do some repotting. Um, I just ordered some new uh, long fiber sphagnum moss so that I can repot some of my uh, nepenthes. A couple of my nepenthes are getting sort of overgrown at the base with the basal shoots and I need to cut some of them off and repot them. Uh, so I'll be doing a video showing you how to separate uh, nepenthes basal shoots here pretty soon too. So I got a lot of stuff coming guys. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel uh, so you can get all those updates and then see all the these cool carnivorous plants. Uh, again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. It means the world to me. And uh, oh yeah, I probably should mention too that I, I finally hit a thousand subscribers. So thank you to everyone that's subscribed to my channel currently already. I it, it, I never really thought I was going to hit a thousand. I always thought that this was kind of a crazy thing that really wasn't going to go anywhere. And now here I am sitting at a thousand subscribers and. Uh, they're kind of it's going up daily so it, it it really does mean a lot to me guys and i appreciate it so much so thank you for being here thank you for subscribing thank you for liking the videos it all really does i know i say that over and over but it really does mean the world to me and it it's just super awesome to have your guys' support so thanks for being here guys um i really hope to see you in the next video we'll talk to you later